Hey and welcome back everyone to the third part of the series where we're going to create this fluffy monster. In the last part we already created the model and added the hair, so in this part we'll finally add some colors. If you want to follow along, you can download all the files from my website and the link is in the description. So what we're going to do first is unwrap the body and then set up some simple shading and then texture paint it. So let's start UV and editing it. I like to switch into the UV editing tab because then you can directly see the UV on the left side and you have your 3D mesh on the right side. Now, first we want to add some seams. For um, the first part, I would like to add one at the neck, which is like really difficult to see because of the subdivision surface modifier, but you can disable that in the current viewport and then you can select a nice loop around the neck. So here just with shift all selected, I'm just going to select once around and then control E to mark a seam. Uh, then I want to add another one that is going around the head. So I split up the head in two directions. And then if you select all and press U, you should already be able to see it. What I also like to do is enable stretch. So that allows me to see which part still needs some an editing. So here we need to see that we need some more seams for the body because that is right now really stretched. And um, I should have selected that loop probably before then I had the head and the body at the same time, uh, but I didn't. So now here, just select one of the edges and then with control and left click, you can click like further and you can, it will find the shortest path. And then you can just go around it and select all the edges and then press control E again to um, add a seam and then all and unwrap to see the result. And lucky for us, this is the only UV unwrapping we actually have to do. So you can do two more things and that is if you select the UVs and then in the UV menu, you can um, select two options. One is to minimize the stretch. So if you still have some crumped up areas that will try to reduce them. And then the second one is to pack the UV islands that will basically give some space between the UV islands. So for painting, if we add a little bit of um, margin around them, they won't um, overlap. All right, so in order for us to be able to paint on our little guy here, we need a image texture. So in the shading tab, do shift I and then texture, image texture to create a new image texture. And then collect the color output from the inner texture to the base color input from the shader that is already there. Then we can just create a image texture. You can just name that whatever you want. Um, also from the size, you're free to choose whatever you want. And for the color, for the, for the general color, for the starting color basically, I'll just go with a bright blue color and also disable alpha because we won't need that one here. And then you should already see that also the hair will directly adopt all the colors from the base mesh that it has. So we can just swap into texture paint mode and then adjust that color. Before we start painting, I just want to get rid of those light lines. So in the viewport overlays, you can just disable extras and that will remove all the lights and then we can start painting. They're just actually two keyboard shortcuts I like to use. S is to pick the current color wherever your mouse is hovering over. So I use that to pick the blue color and then just adjust it a little bit to make it a little bit darker and then start painting over it. So for this one, I'm not even using a drawing tablet. So I'm just drawing here with my mouse because of um, the hairs, you don't really see the details when you draw. So you can go really rough, um, maybe just decrease the strength of your brush a little bit and then just paint over it. So what I'm trying to do here is just adding some darker and lighter colors to the whole mesh. So especially the parts that are more on the inside, like the neck or the feet that are more on the bottom, I wanna make that a little bit darker. And then the part like the belly, um, I wanna make that a little bit lighter. So basically just, swap between the colors, um, choose a light strength, and then just uh, paint over it. You can also change the brush size easily with the keyboard shortcut F. So you can see me here using F and S basically continuously to add some smaller and some bigger details. All right, last but not least, I wanna add some darker color in the mouth. And right now you can see if I'm drawing with the brush, it, I have to draw a lot of times over it to really get that darker color. And it also has a blurred out edge. 
So we can easily change that, first of all, by changing the strength of the brush to one. And then also going in the fall of settings and choosing the square from the settings. And now you can see the brush border is like not blurred out anymore and you can easily draw out the mouth. In the end, I just added a few more highlights at the head and also darkened a little bit more the area around the eye. And then we're already finished with the painting part and we can change back into the shading tab. So right now there are two more things that need colors uh, and these are the antennas and I want to change the eye because the eye is right now blue and our monster is also blue so I would like the eyes to have a little bit different color. So if you select the inner eye you can see the whole shading graph which is quite massive but there should be a blue color ramp node which is basically the blue of the eye. So if you go after that and if you add a hue saturation value color node in there you can easily adjust the color that is coming from the color output um, by changing the hue value. You can also play around with the other values or you can of course also change the color ramp directly um, if you want to choose some specific values instead of just um, playing around with the hue. So I'm going here for green because I want to add the antennas as pink and I think that's giving a, a nice contrast here. Alright, so for the antennas we need a new material. So let's select one of them and then click on the new button to create a new material. Maybe just rename it so you can keep it apart. And then you should see there's automatically the BSDF shader again. We don't want that. We want an emission shader. So shift A, shader and emission and then connect it with the output node. You can also remove the BSDF afterwards and then just change the color of the emission shader to, for example, some pink value and also increase the strength if you want it to be more bright. And then for the second antenna, you can just click on the second antenna and choose the material from the material output. And with that, we have colored our little monster and we finished them. Thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful and you guys enjoyed it. If so, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and of course if you haven't already, please subscribe.